video 22 Graves and Hashimoto's Diseases. Hi, Dr. So Parker again. Welcome to Section 2, Video 2 of Pesa Productions Thyroid Eye Disease 10 Part Series. In this Section 2, entitled Autoimmune Thyroid Disorder, we are discussing the autoimmune character of thyroid disorders associated with eye changes. In the second video of this section, we discuss Graves and Hashimoto's diseases. Graves' disease is a very unfortunate name since for many people it conjures images of cemeteries, terminal illness, headstones, and death. Although the sudden onset of thyroid disease can be serious, recognized and treated cases are very rarely life-threatening. Diseases are often named after the person who is believed to have first described them or by the symptoms the disorder creates. In 1835, Robert James Graves described a disorder with five characteristic features. Enlarged thyroid gland, seen as a bulging in the neck, called a goiter. Bulging eyes, so-called exophthalmus or proptosis. Eyelid retraction, which we will describe later. Irregular heartbeat, or cardiac palpitations. And female gender. So if a person doesn't have all five of these characteristics, for example, if a person is male, then that person doesn't really have what Graves described. And so technically, that person doesn't have Graves' disease. If a person doesn't have all five of these characteristics, but only three, simply a goiter, bulging eyes, and eyelid retraction, then you might say that person has Baysdow's disease, described by Carl Baysdow, in 1840. So should we call this sort of Baysdow's disease? Some physicians do, in fact some will call it Baysdow Graves disease, especially those in the scientific and medical literature. However, an association between just two characteristics, goiter and bulging eyes, was first entered into the written literature nearly 700 years before Graves and Baysdow were even born. In 1110, Saeed Ismali al -Jujani described this association in the Persian writings. However, if one depended upon reading the English language, then in 1786, Caleb Hillier Perry described the same association between an enlarged thyroid and bulging eyes. So perhaps those who speak English really should be calling this Perry's disease. Whereas the Italians could have called it Flagiani disease after his description in 1802 or perhaps Testa's disease described in 1810 when Robert Graves was still only 14, 25 years before the Graves publication. Although all of these learned men were responsible for recognizing the association between the eyes and the thyroid, nobody advocates calling this Aldrigiani Periflagiani Testa Baysdow Graves disease. It is now apparent why Graves disease is not an appropriate name in addition to the disorder being named after the wrong person, many people, including some physicians, use the term Graves' disease to mean a myriad of different things. Common incorrect uses include a person with hyperthyroidism. Remember, Graves wrote nothing at all about the thyroid status in these people. Hyperthyroidism is not a defining characteristic of the original description, just a bulging thyroid gland. Some people use the term Graves' disease to mean a person with any thyroid disorder and measurable thyroid hormone abnormality. Some will say it's a person who has an autoimmune antibody against the TSH receptor. Others will use the term to mean somebody who has a goiter or an enlarged thyroid, whereas others will use Graves' disease to describe somebody with bulging eyes. The confusion that arises from the misuse of the name Graves' disease can be very frustrating, since all of the different uses often represent very different disorders. Therefore, when someone says, I have Graves' disease, it's very difficult to know what is meant. Therefore, we should move away from using the term Graves' disease because the name is already too ingrained in our culture, meaning too many different things, even among physicians. Similarly, Hashimoto's disease is also an often misused term. Some use it to mean that a person has a low level of thyroid hormone. Others may mean a person has a measurable inhibitory autoimmune antibody. Or even others may mean that there is an inflammation of the thyroid gland. 
Many people are told that they have both Graves and Hashimoto's. All in all, Hashimoto's disease is another term that we are better off no longer using. So then what do we call this disease process? What do we call the complicated array of autoimmune disorders that affect both the thyroid and the eyes? Over the last several decades, many terms have been used and eventually discarded. The reason we are stressing this point is that today many people use the internet to gain more information about various topics, and it is sometimes difficult to know whether various names such as endocrine orbitopathy and Graves' disease actually refer to the same disorder or not. 